Hi friends. We want to check out some more looks using the Natasha Denona eyeshadow palette Metropolis. Then please keep on watching. Hi, my name is Alicia. If it's your first time here, thank you so much for clicking on my video. Kinky Sweat stands for my kinky hair and sweat life. I am a fitness professional who loves things all movement and beauty. If you want to check out what I do in between the makeup, stick ahead over to my Instagram. At first, I wanted to do a review on Soft Glam or Mini Glam. Mini Glam. Wrong brand. But then I was like, Mm, I don't want to talk about product details and swatches and what I think about the palette. I do have it. Maybe I will film one eventually. But many of you have asked that I dive into Metropolis again. I do have a full on review video going over the palette, details, swatches. I also have three looks on that video. If you want to check out the details first and just get my overall view on the palette, then you can head over to that video. I was like, who's over there? I'm like, it's just my shoes. <laughs> But many of you had asked that I dive back in and I'm trying to figure out if I want to do a beginner approach or more creative approach. Mainly what had inspired this video is going back in to Metropolis but using the Linda Halberg crayons. Oops. These suckers are so beautifully designed and formulated that I actually did a look using one of these pencils yesterday with Metropolis and I simply loved it. So this video is just for inspo, it's a tutorial as well, learning how to use the Metropolis palette, how to attack it if you have it and you haven't been using it because you feel you just don't know how to navigate the colors, you don't know what technique to use and hopefully this video will help. And with that said friends, let's get in a little closer. But first, we gotta brush out these brows. Do, 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 do. It is very bright here at Maddie's house, if you haven't noticed already. The sun's coming through, but it's cloudy at the same time, so it is acting like a filter, but because of where I am in the room, it is very bright. Ooh, that's too light, too dark. So hopefully it doesn't wash me out too bad. For my eye base, I like to go in with my Shiseido Concealer in 301 Medium mixed with the ABH Eye Primer. The reason why I mix them because the ABH Primer on its own is very light on my lids. And I do understand that serves a purpose, especially if you're dealing with very bright colors. I primarily like to keep that shade on my lid and gradient the concealer shade closer to my brow bone. So it's a little more not crazy looking. So I just put both on the back of my hand. We're gonna do a little mixy mix. First carve out under the brow. Ooh, it's gonna be a light changing type of day. We're already used to that though. I realized I did not bring like a small blender brush with me. I don't know why I did that. It's all good though. We'll use this brush first to spread the product out using the finger now to further blend it. I'm going to attempt a cut crease. Who am I? I was very much inspired by Linda's latest video. She created a cut crease using her crayons and her latest Enchanted Mysteries eyeshadow palette. So I thought I would follow suit and make something happen. Kind of, sort of. <laughs> Taking her crayon in calf flash. She actually did this on her video where she used a crayon to sketch out the crease. Now, when doing a cut crease, you have to start the line above your natural crease. So if my natural crease sits here, then we gotta go above that. If I just carefully sketch that out, that's pretty much where on the lid we will take that line. I'm looking down so I could stretch the skin a little bit just so it's easier to sketch this out. And you see I'm, I'm mimicking the natural curve of my crease. I'm not on it, but creating a parallel curve above that line. The initial sketch does not have to be perfect. It's just to lay down the groundwork for how you will build this crease. I'm actually taking my Chikahoto T7 brush. Because this is undyed goat hair, I can use this with a cream product. And with that said, I'll carefully use this brush to now soften that liner. And when doing so, you can see, and it definitely helps that the shape of the brush is the way that it is so that you can just carefully buff the line without it becoming too out of place. I could have started with another color, but I just picked that one up to see kind of where it takes us. Let's take this shade here. And if it's your first time seeing the Metropolis palette, if you happen to have it, 
and this is the first video you see on it, know that Natasha Denona designs her palettes like a matrix. No matter where you go, row or column wise, you have a look. And that's why she designed the palette the way that she did. With that shade, and now carefully going over where the pencil is. And it's okay if we totally cover it because we just wanted it there as an outline, right? So now we can better see where to place the shadow. And I feel this shadow from the palette has a similar coolish type of olive tone to it, almost taupey in nature, that it meshes very well with the pencil. So that is the first pot of this cut crease. Dipping back in that shadow again, do make sure you tap off so you don't have any fallout on your face. And then we build that up. Look at me. I'm like excited about this. It's looking okay so far. Let me not speak too soon. <laughs> Taking my Sonia G Classic Crease in with this creamy matte tan shade. Tapping off excess and lightly buffing the edges of that first placement of color. So what this will do is make this appear a lot less harsh and that shade is perfect to blur that harsh line and we could also take it in toward that nose the inner nose inner part of the brow and i'm lifting my arch so i could better place the brush where i need to see it go because sometimes if i don't i can't really tell what <laughs> what i'm doing all right that is part one the question is now what shall we put on the lid since we started with this color we can go up this way we can take this quad we can go down this way i think hmm that would be quite interesting if we took this row that is a very interesting color story. You know what? Let's do it. Let's freaking do it, man. Going in with guilty mood. I'm gonna start here, just lightly sketch, pull it in, and just start to go over my socket, right? Okay, because I think I wanna leave a little bit of a space between that and the high crease line. Wiping my little Chikahoto brush, going back in to now smudge guilty mood closing my eyes so i could see how we're blending that pencil cool now we have an outline and with that i'm going in with my sonagy build a pro in with this creamy matte teal shade and start on the outer part of the lid and pull it in because this is where i want the majority of the color to stay and i'm using the tip of the brush to just smooth out the edges a little bit and to smooth out that point because this is where my eye skin moves the most. And I have to be really careful so I don't move it around and that the shadow doesn't appear or doesn't skip rather. So I'm being very careful and I'm using light pressure so we could avoid that skipping but blend it at the same time. I'm taking more of that shade on the outer V and building up the color richness there. Going back in with Guilty Mood and using the pencil to kind of smooth out my sketching here. I'm going on the border, lifting my lid so I can darken it up a little bit and create a little more contrast. So Naji Pencil Pro. Since it's a smaller brush with more of a point shape, I feel that will be optimal to then blend this out so it doesn't get out of hand near that corner. I'm going in with my finger to apply this beautiful turquoise metallic, but you can use a brush. I feel it just performs a lot better with the finger application. I'm actually gonna apply a little more of Guilty Mood. So Guilty Mood for me definitely sets up any metallic shadow beautifully well in that it offers up better longevity. It definitely acts as a primer, but Definitely more helpful when it's this like exact same color as the shadow. I'm gonna press that onto the lid. It's good to press and then from there, pat and blend. Now I'm trying to fix this. I don't know if I brought the right brush. Actually, let me use my Stone G Mini Booster. I'm gonna go back into that creamy matte teal shade and use the Mini Booster to then smooth out these edges. Perfect. Perfect, darling. And the Mini Booster is optimal for this. It's such a soft brush. And like I said, this part of my lid moves around very much so, and it makes it quite difficult to create a smooth line, especially with precise looks like these. 
but I, I think we did it. Here's what I want to do. I don't know if it's going to be the right choice. I want to place this mustard in between like the olive and the turquoise. Question is, do I have, yes, actually I have the right brush. We have the Hakuhodo J242 in with that mustard shade and carefully wedging that in between top and bottom and I'm building the color. I'll pat it down first and then I'll slowly start to blend it out. I really want this to show up distinctly that shade. That's why I'm taking my time patting down and then blending after. Now back with that olive taupe shade. Same Hakuhoto brush but we'll build up the lower lash line. I'm also Maybe I'll bring in this color too a little bit. Going back with that matte mustard, like dandelion yellow, and I'm actually gonna pat it in and around the inner part of the eye. I don't know if that's gonna be the right choice. Mini booster with that olive shade. Oh, I didn't tap off enough. More towards the inner part. Hello, you're gonna be in frame. More towards the inner part of the eye. Oh, we messed up, put too much put too much. I don't want to sabotage this look now. Change my mind. I'm taking the metallic turquoise and I'm placing that on the inner part. Ooh, but I got to be careful. It was reckless. Reckless. Taking this shade with my Hakuhodo brush, carefully pulling it in on the olive. It's going to change the color a little bit, but I just want the outer part of the eye to appear a little more cohesive. Take another color altogether, Vega Flash. On the inner rim. I don't know if I like that. I don't like, I always try to do the inner rim, but I just don't like how it looks. I don't know what it is. Take Etopi Olive under lash line. To just smoke it out a little bit more. And we have look number one. Look number two, maybe we'll do something a little easier on this eye. How about that? My brain requests it. <laughs> Let's use this column here. First shade up with our refer number 15. Just a nice simple blend in the crease. Now, if this is your first Natasha Denona palette, I don't know if you realize this, but she showcases her creamy or cream to matte formula, which is different from her creamy matte formula. The creamy matte is a powder shadow. The one I'm using here now has a very moussey texture if you touch it with your finger, but it blends out like a powder and has a beautiful skin-like finish. And it just glides across the skin so beautifully easily. And I feel it's an ideal texture to work with if you are a beginner. It's a great formula to use, uh, beginner to pro, but I feel especially suitable for beginners. And this color in particular is simply gorgeous. I'm a little light right now, just working with the natural sunlight that we have, which I'm so grateful for. Sometimes it just makes it a little tricky, okay? Classic crease now with her traditional powder creamy matte. Pressing that on the outer V first, because since we're just sticking to this column, ensuring that we rely on this shade to create a little more contrast, to bring in a little more depth. I tap it onto the outer V, but then I'll use circular motions with the brush, holding it at the very end of its handle to ensure that we don't pull or tug the skin and that will eliminate any skips in the product. Taking a little more with that first shade onto our refer 15, and I'm further buffing the edges of that placement so it can look a little more diffused. I like to pull my shadow out. You do not have to do that technique. I find that it's the most flattering for my eye shape, but no, you could always end it closer to your eye. Maybe make it a little rounder instead of out like in a point. Chikahoto shadow brush with this beautiful copper metallic shade. Pressing and blending onto, I want to say inner, and middle of the lid because we will place that beautiful red shade more on the outer corner of this look. This is a gorgeous shade. It's peachy copper. It has really lovely brightness to it, but it just look at the light it brings to the whole look. Same brush now with this ruby metallic, tapping that more on the outer V of our eye. So we're bringing in a little more depth here, creating a stronger gradient of color. And that creamy powder matte we applied first definitely enhances the, the total color richness of the whole look. And especially it helps that red metallic shade to really 
pull through. I'm taking whatever leftover I tapped on the outer corner in towards the crease as well as you see here, just so it could look a little more seamless in application. Back in with my classic crease to go over those edges, making sure again, everything looks buffed and smooth and in towards here near the nose as well. Taking that ruby shade with the same Chikohoto brush, now on the outer lower third, and I'm also bringing it in back on the outer V. That copper shade we applied on the lid in with my Hakuhoto J242 on the inner part of my lower lash line, connecting it to that ruby shade. And why not? I'm gonna bring it onto the inner corner as well and use another shade in here for the highlight. Taking classic crease, buffing the lower edges as well the top again so it could have a really nice gradient effect you can dip out and use a highlighter shade if you are doing your whole face and you rely on that shade for the inner corner highlight I'm tapping into this in the palette again Sona G's pencil pro brush tapping that on this eye look and then taking it onto this eye look all right friends let's slap on some lashes and I'll be right back and here's the finished look on the lashes. I have Ardell Wispies Classic. Could have went with the Demi Wispies, but I just brought these with me to Maddie's house. So like this side is looking a little wonks, but it's okay. We're just gonna pan out. We don't have to see it up close, but I didn't want you to see the lids up close. Although this mustard shade is not as prominent as maybe I had wanted to incorporate it into the look, I do think it offers up a subtle, I do think it offers up a subtle surprise in terms of shade. It looks gorgeous with the turquoise story on the lid and you just have this thin dandelion moment, if you will. And monochromatic looks you can never go wrong with when it concerns reds, oranges, coppers, and uh, corals, you know, like this, I could do this every day. And here's a wide shot of both looks so you can see how they look from afar. I really love what we did with this eye. I think it's unexpected. I like the cut crease. It's not a strong cut crease like we have seen online. It's definitely harder. I could probably adjust the light because it is so light. It's harder to see that olive taupey part of the look and you just primarily see the turquoise on the lid. But I think it was a nice try, something different to do and a different technique in terms of how you could incorporate those shades. And of course, you can never go wrong with the fiery eye. And this was incredibly easy to do despite the impact that it has on the end that just speaks volumes to Natasha's formula and specifically in this palette. I'm so happy she included a lot of her creamy matte formulas. Again, that just makes it so easy to blend with and layer so that the look doesn't look heavy on the lids, but it just looks still lightweight, but has so much color impact at the same time. I can't get over this metallic turquoise shade, especially when applied over what is this called? Guilty Mood. And this is why I wanted to come back here and apply these shadows on Linda's crayons for you guys because both of these products together, it's like you don't even know. The longevity is there, the color richness and impact is just tenfold. It really elevates the whole experience and it just makes it easier for cut creases or if you wanted to do more graphic looks, even without the cut crease, we could have just done the turquoise, make it really look super graphic from lid to out here on the crease like that. Let's go into round two. I'm wondering what I should do next. We'll tap into it, but let's get this off and I'll see you in a minute. I will go in with concealer after we've done the look, but I did reapply my little concoction of the Shiseido and ABH eye primer. I want to go in with Calm Mood. I want to use this green, but I also want to go into Vega Flash. I want to use Vega Flash with like the more olive tones in here. Starting on the inner part of the lid, this is a matte finish crayon, but I want to apply it under the avocado shade in the Metropolis palette, you know what I'm saying? Gotta work quick with these suckers because you got only a little bit of time before they set down completely. This is Linda's 304 brush. I'm just carefully smudging that out. And you could be a little aggressive here because if you don't, the pencil will stay put, friends. So you kind of have to put a little elbow grease in there. Don't fret. I know it looks a little crazy, but we're gonna fix it. Going in with Sonya G's Jumbo Blender. In with this shade, gonna 
pat that on. Ooh, is a different shade altogether. That green is not quite the same as Calm Mood. Should we abort this mission or should we try to salvage it? That is the question. We're gonna try to salvage it, friends. I know it's not the most ideal color combination. What we can do is see what this happens. This is more of a deeper green, but I feel it aligns better with what Calm Mood has to offer. I know it's not the best start, but you know what? We're gonna make it. I'm taking my Jumbo Blender now in towards my crease and just fluffing the edges using the edge of the brush. And I'm pulling it towards the, more across the center, like towards the outer portion of the lid making sure I'm lifting my eyes so I see what's happening. I do want to take the first color we started with and use that to buff the edges of that pine, pine, of the pine green we applied after this shade. I feel that's going to make a really nice gradient. And although I was trying to see if the pencil kind of enhanced that shade, you know what, you live and you learn. You live and you learn. Taking classic crease with that same avo shade and I just needed a softer brush to further buff, buff, to further buff the edges. And I'm actually gonna take it a little out as well, being a little more reckless with this. There we go, there we go. Taking my finger, and I'm just patting down on the portions that I feel need a little more punch. I don't want any part of my skin to peek through. Now, as you probably already assumed, I'm jumping around the palette for this eye look, but before we go into the palette again, Vega Flash, this time on the outer edges of the eye. Linda's 304 again to quickly blend out that pencil, because now we'll start building the outer corner of this look. Buff, 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 like no tomorrow. Sona G's soft shader with this olive shade. Gonna pat that down where we applied Vega Flash. Vega, Vega. So we have an olive moment, and the pine moment, which I really love. This is definitely in a different portion of the color wheel altogether, this olive and this pine teal sitch. But you know what? We're gonna, we're gonna make it work, friends. Feel what pulls it together is the use of the avocado shade, which is what we will go in with now using our classic crease or whatever blender brush you have. I just announced the brushes because I know you guys want to know what I'm using tool-wise, but you could use whatever tool that you have that mimics the design of the brushes that I use in the video. Taking my finger again and just patting down on the edges between what's going on the inner part of the eye and now the outer corner of the eye. Taking this gold shade with my Hakuhodo J242, definitely placing this on the inner part of the lid. So shiny, so bright. Definitely will take this shade again. Now on the outer lower lash line, connecting it with that gold metallic shade, pulling it all together. And taking the deeper olive shade that we applied on the outer corner, connecting it to the top. Mini booster, just going over from top lid to lower lash line and smoothing everything out. Taking that avo shade with the mini booster to combine. All right, let's move on to this eye. What shall we do? I'm looking at my pencils here. I have uh, a wave of flash, which is like a bronzy type of shade. I also have, ooh, I wanted to put happy mood. You know what? We'll go back to this eye quickly. I wanted to put happy mood on the lower rim. I don't know how that will look, but I feel that offers up like a nice brightness, don't you think? Ooh, I wanna create, let's do like, I know this is very monochromatic, but I also wanna dip into this row because that's, that's just what I wanna do. Let's start with a wave of flash on the outer third first, see where that takes us. Linda's 304 again to just smudge and blend. Sometimes I just want to take my finger and do it because, you know, we're not looking for a precise blend because I know it looks messy, but we got to get it rolling. You know what I mean? Sonia's Jumbo Blender with the last shade here in this column. Pressing that on the outer part of the lid over that pencil. And I'm pulling down because I don't want it to travel too high just yet. Traveling up the column, same brush with this shade. Now on the inner part of the eye, over that first shade, we 
placed. Reference number 15 with this lighter brown shade. And now we'll buff the edges of that darker brown as well as the metallic we place on the inner part of the lid. Hello. And this shade is that lovely cream to matte texture, that moussey texture that just makes it so easy to smooth and blend. Taking my soft shader with that first dark brown and I'm patting more on the outer V to bring in a little more contrast and then to pull it out a little more as well. And using again my reference number 15 with no additional product to just further buff closer to the brow. Taking my finger with that metallic shade we apply on the inner third, I'm just patting a little more down here, just making sure everything looks together. Taking the darker brown shade with my shader brush, the outer third, pulling it onto the outer V as well. Mini booster with the medium brown shade just to smooth that transition out. Taking this shade again, my Hakuhoto J242 inner lower third, and of course, onto the inner corner as well. For this eye, I kind of want to dip back into this duochrome here. Actually, no, this duochrome here. With my Sony G Pencil Pro, now on this inner corner, I'm using my finger to just pat down the excess bits so that they can melt it to the lid. All right, let's slap on some lashes and I'll be right back. And here's a close up of the final look. Same Ardell Wispy style lashes. And you can see here the lid. I wish I would have applied this shade on the outer corner, but it's not bad. I think it's just me having a conversation with my comfort zone because typically I like to see darker shades on the outer part of my lid, but it doesn't have to be like that all the time, right? I think it's a nice change from the norm and the olive into the pine, I think is a beautiful gradient on this look. And here you, you can't go wrong with, again, a monochromatic look and the browns here on the last column of the palette. I love these tones. They're more of like a peachy type of brown and it's not your typical dark brown, but it has really nice depth. And this metallic on the lid is just gorgeous. And here's a wide shot of both looks. I forgot to mention on the lips that I had on the first round and on this is the Natasha Denona lip liner in L6 with her I Need a Nude lipstick in Noa. I definitely loved all the looks I created today. Definitely some of them took a little bit of struggling of figuring out, but that's kind of the process of it all, right? Especially if you're tackling a palette that you're not comfortable with, or you have a lot of shades there and you experiment with how they layer, how they combine color-wise and texture-wise. I think this is one of Natasha's best palettes. And I was speaking to one of my clients about it because she loves makeup as well. Hi, Leia that there's something about this story that excites me. I just love how it's arranged. People think it's wild and crazy and there's no rhythm or rhyme to it, but I can see it here. I can see what Natasha was going for in line with the inspiration from Art Deco and the colors you see from that period. I very much feel is consistent with what she presents in this palette. And I love, of course, the textures that you have in here. It's just a wide variety, again, of the powder matte, the cream to matte, and the metallic shades, dual chromes here as well. One of my favorite palettes of 2019, as I'm sure I would have already uploaded that video, so you kind of know that already. But hopefully this video helped in terms of not only just using this palette, but maybe you have other shades in your collection that are similar. Maybe you took away some new techniques that you haven't tried before, not only techniques, but different color combinations that you would have not applied on your lid. And that's what we're going for in the new year, diving into palettes that we already own, maybe widening our scope of eyeshadow application technique, uh, using different colors or different colors that we would not use otherwise, but leaving our comfort zone a little bit in that respect and surrendering to the creativity of it all. Let me know your favorite tips that you picked up from this video. If you hated all of them, well, I guess you can let me know as well. <laughs> what other palettes do you wanna see me redo? Even if I have reviewed them on my channel, I'll be more than happy to dive back in and do more looks using that palette. And until then, friends, that is a wrap. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope this video will help. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and maybe consider subscribing to my channel. And until then, I'll see you on here again with another review tutorial, diving back into old eyeshadow palettes, favorites list, or get ready with me. Take care and I'll see you again soon.